The anime that begat the lie of a new era for anime is back with more and nonsense for the average viewer to wonder how this was ever supposed to usher a new era when it's so poorly written. It starts by giving the blunt slice of white toast that is the main character a reason to continue his ascent to the tower. It basically comes down to find waifu and unravel mysteries by getting stronger, none of which happen organically because it's poorly written. Ban, this bland archetype, doesn't care about unraveling mysteries and should have lost interest in his waifu after her betrayal, but since the show somehow needs to continue with this loser as the protagonist, it wants you to think he cares about mysteries and the traitor as waifu, as well as getting stronger being the only way he can achieve the other two, because it's a poorly written story. The anime has the audacity to show you all the secondary characters of the first season sitting on a table and doing absolutely nothing. In case you somehow cared about these bland archetypes, stop doing it since you will never see them again. The brilliant writer removed them from the plot after you were supposed to be invested in them in favor of introducing more characters who are equally bland. Make sure not to care about them either, they get a similar treatment down the line, because it's a poorly written story. Then we get a time skip and now we are in the 20th level! If for some reason you thought you would get to see each and every one of them and marvel at their amazing world building, well, sucks to be you! You got duped! Exactly as you did with Sword Art Online, which is supposed to be an inspiration for Tower of God. Remember when the trailers made you think there would be several episodes for each level? You only get glimpses of a few levels and in a hurry, because it's a poorly written story. So, on this new level we get a generic city. There is nothing special about it and yet the show is hailed as good as One Piece when it comes to world building. Then the rules change once again and now you have to pay money to willingly join the tests of the tower, when before that you get teleported unwillingly inside completely for free. You didn't seriously expect any consistency in the rules, did you? So, how much do the fees matter in the plot? Not in the slightest, since grown-ass men won't have the money while five-year-old girls will. Also, it's the 20th level and somehow five-year-olds are still in the game, because it's a poorly written story. The protagonist is a participant and now he has a completely different personality. Instead of being a clueless blunt slice of white toast, now he's an edgy blunt slice of white toast. Hurrah! Character development that happened instantly and out of screen along with a time skip, because it's a poorly written story! So, what is the toast with legs doing in the tower this time? Honestly, not even he knows. One moment he beats up anyone he comes across, the next moment he doesn't harm anyone, then he changes his mind and beats them up anyways. No consistency whatsoever. Oh, also he's a rebel now, out to kill the king of the tower. How do you know that? Because he wears a black robe with the insignia of the rebellion. With it, anyone instantly knows he's a rebel, including the organizers of the tests of the tower who work for the king. Why do they allow the walking toast to participate and don't instantly arrest him and interrogate him? Because it's a poorly written story. Can't wait to see what the two-legged toast and the new blunt archetypes will do next in this amazing show that is considered the Korean Sword and Online meets One Piece and ushers a new era for anime.